yeah. for, for anybody listening here, you know, find yeah. something that, that you really resonate with in this industry and become a master at it. All right, this is Ola coming to you live from my Empire Pro Studios. On this episode, I have uh, one of the very specials in this industry. I guarantee you on this webinar, you're going to learn a lot, okay? Because, uh, um, you know, clearly in this business, you see people come and go all the time, but you also see some people and they're um, extremely consistent. If you want to know the real people that are really making, that are really creating the real results, look for people that are consistent. Uh, I'm not talking about people that make $50,000 and then they disappear and you can't find them anymore and you don't know what's going on with them. There's a lot of them. If you've been around the industry for a while, you would have uh, noticed a few of them. But um, if you want to know the people that are creating real results, the right people to follow, just look for people that are consistent because your secrets are in consistency. When it comes down to consistent, this guy and his team are exactly uh, the definition of that, in my opinion, in recent times. And I am privileged, and you are privileged to be here right now listening to this. And without any further ado, I'm going to let him tell you the whole story, right? Without any further ado, here's Travis Older. What's up, man? Hello, hello. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> We're going to have a ball, man. They're going to have fun, too, you know. Uh, we got uh, – I got a few questions for you. Um, you're going to be mentoring me and the rest of the world for the next one hour. So <laughs> – Let's get into it. So let's start from your story, man. How did you, how did you get into this crazy world of uh, entrepreneurship? Man, it started when I was like, I would say my first time um, getting into this. Uh, hold on, make sure uh, you can hear me. Cool. All right. Yep. So yeah, the first time I got into it was uh, when I was like 15 years old. When I was, um, you know, in in, in high school, uh, yep. you know, I just needed a way to make extra money. So you know, I would tell my um, stepmom to uh, take me to, you know, Costco to buy those candies in, in bulk. So I'll buy like candy in bulk and bring it to, bring me to school and I'll sell it, you know, for a profit. Um, and that went over well, you know, the other kids knew me as, as the guy that had the candy, you know, so I'll, I'll, I'll be dealing candy in, 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 uh, in class. So I guess that was my first time stepping into entrepreneurship when I actually started you know, buying and selling stuff, you know, um, hand by hand in high school. Wow, wow, that's crazy, man. And I hear that story all the time. I hear so much, so much from the uh, from the successful entrepreneurs that I'm like, is that really true? Because uh, I have uh, I, then I start to dig through my own personal story and see I did something as a child that was kind of entrepreneurial, and then I started to really pay attention. I think I had some things like that too, um, but you have to. It's easy to forget unless you really start to put your story together, and then you realize it's true. Did you go through that too? You had to like dig back and say, listen, I actually started this way back. Yeah, I did. Because, you know, I, I could have told a story, you know, when I started like th three years ago, four years ago, you know, mm -hmm. when I started being successful. But, you know, it, it really started, you know, when I was, you know, that, that kid, you know, that, that di didn't know any better. He just wanted to make extra money. You know, he, he was tired of asking his, his father for, for money. He said, hey, why not make your own money, right? So right. that's when it really started for me, man. So are you saying you have to... Or are you saying you kind of have to have the DNA in you a little bit? Maybe. Yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. You, have, you gotta have that, that desire, you know? You gotta have that want inside you so know, to, to make it. If someone work. comes to you right now and says, uh, listen, I've never had uh, a success in my life. I've never thought about being an entrepreneur, but I have my back against the wall. I need to do something. Uh, because, in my opinion, it's a little tricky for me, okay? I'm just being real. It's a little tricky for me because somebody worked for the last. 30 years of their life, all right? And they're now uh, in their mid-50s, 60s, and they're trying to get into this business, right? Um, of course, I don't want to turn them away and say they can't do it, right? But I always have the question in my mind that what is it that's in your head that made you feel so comfortable working for another company for all those years? And I have parents that are 60-something and they, they work on a regular job pretty much their life. And when I have certain conversations, I just feel like, yo, like it's just different thinking, different world, different bubble entirely. What do you think about that? No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, for the folks that are just starting off, you know, maybe in la later on in life, mm -hmm. I mean, just think, I mean, the, what I'll say to them, and anybody starting, and even at my age, you know, I'm, I'm only 31, but it's all, all comes out to programming, you know? 
you know, what, you got to think about, you know, how you were programmed your entire life. And I, I know it's hard to deprogram yourself, but, you know, you do it through education, through books, through getting around the right people. Even the people who are listening to this, to this, uh, this, this uh, interview right now, I mean, you're here for a reason. You know, you're here, you're listening, you're, you're taking the information, you're getting around the right people. So as long as you're taking those steps forward, um, you know, it definitely helps you out, you know, in, in the long run. Even if you are working on the five, like, even if you are in your 50s or 60s, you know, and you're looking to take on this journey, it's okay. You know, you can start at any age. Just know that you were programmed a certain way in the past that led you to where you're at right now. So that means that you have to go ahead and change those patterns and, and program yourself in a certain way, the way we have, right? The way entrepreneurs have, so that we can keep pushing, we can keep, you know, succeeding and keep striving for, for more. So that, that's what I would say, you know, to people that are, you know, just, you know, starting on this industry, no matter what age you're in, just, just remember that you are programmed a certain way. That's the reason why you're living the way you're living right now. You know, we did it too. You know, we were programmed that way. We, I was programmed from birth that I had to get, you know, a, a good job. Um, I had to, you know, go to school, you know, do, do all the typical things that you always hear. There's nothing wrong with that at all because we, we do need people going to school. We need, we need doctors, we need nurses, we need, you know, all these people that are passionate about what they do. But, you know, if you're in a current situation that, you know, you're not passionate about what you're doing, it's time for you to, to change uh, that, that direction. So, you know, that, that's what I would say as far as that. That, that that's, that's, a, that's a great answer, man, because uh, <laughs> I was crumbling there, you know, uh, and you're right. We all did that. We, uh, it almost, it's, it's like the story you told earlier too about the 15 years old. Uh, you hear over and over. Another thing you hear over and over is I read books all the time. You hear over and over and it's almost start to become like, is this a, a gimmick or, you know, are they trying to get me to buy books? They're like, nah. I, I read books too. You read books, <laughs> right? And, um, and, and, and it's, you know, no matter, however way you want to feel about it, feel about it, but you have to read books. You have to reprogram your brain, especially if you've been working all your life and mm-hmm. are set to think a certain way. Um, there are all kind of, uh, of thinking that comes with that, man. We could start from uh, abundance, you know, uh, feeling right. like somebody's out to get you. I mean, what kind of people say somebody's about to scam them for buying something online? Uh, there's a certain type of mindset that comes with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because uh, at the end of the day, you you go buy, my mother bought something on uh, AliExpress, and then the, the shoe did not fit. It's, a, it's shoes, right? Did not fit, and she had to return it. And then she's having trouble getting the refund back and stuff like that, right? But the first thing that came to her brain wasn't, it must have been a scam. She's just trying to sort out how to talk to them and get them the money back, right? But right. the people that, that just walk around feeling like somebody's always out to get them, it's, it's, it's coming from a place of lack, you know, when you feel that way. So all of that stuff can be reprogrammed by, by the brain, and it's so absolutely true. Yeah, well, I mean, well, the thing about it, I think about it is like, do, do you blame people? You know, people are in a state of fear, a state of worry. It's because the things that are around them. I mean, you know, if, if you're even in a, in a state of lack or fear or anything like that, just look and see what you're doing on a daily basis. See the people that you're surrounding yourself with. See the, the type of media that you're taking into. I mean, are, are you watching the news? You know, news is very good at putting worry and fear into the people's heads. So, you know, if, if anybody has that kind of mindset, I just say, look, look around you, man. What, what, are you, what are you surrounding yourself with? What are you educating yourself with? You know, that, that's why you're in a state of fear and, and lack, you know? That's true. That's true. Now, another aspect to that, I want you to touch, I want you to touch on, is, you know, when, when, when you, a baby is born, right? The way they start walking <laughs> is by falling quite a few times, right? And, and they fall, they keep standing up, right? And... It almost seems like the most successful entrepreneurs uh, in the entrepreneurship space period are kind of like that. You know, you fail so many times <laughs> uh, and then you're crazy enough to never give up, right? Um, let me guess, you've never failed before. Oh, no, man. It's, it's the thing <laughs> about it, but when, when you start looking in a different way, you know, you, you look at failure as feedback then the, your whole world changes, you know, you, you don't feel bad, you just keep moving, right? So yeah, of course, I mean, if, if you say, if you call it a failure, I, I just call it feedback, because we, we fell every day, you know? I call it, I call it data. <laughs> yeah, right, data, it's true. You collect the data and see what, what went wrong. I mean, look, look at Tommy Edison, you know, if you ask him, um, you know, if you fell at making a, the light bulb, you, you're like, no, I just found, you know, a thousand ways that it didn't mm-hmm. work. Yeah. So it's that same mentality, right? Right. So it's your perception. It's pretty much your perception that becomes your reality, right? 
Exactly. That, that's exactly. crazy. But you know, when you get past uh, when you get past that three years of age, if you're not walking yet, every fall you have from that point becomes fear for you. Uh, it makes it a little more, more scarier. That's when scarier, and that's when you have to take a baby to therapy and all those kind of craziness. If the baby is not walking like age of three years old, you start having fear. You have fear as parents. Babies start having fear too because they're overwhelmed with so much talk about that around them, right. and, and and that's kind of like what happens sometimes to to people, human beings generally. They they fail, right? They, the more they fail beyond certain point, they just get scared and then they give up on the dreams. Most people mm -hmm. give up their dreams, right? But then you have to get to a place, place where you said earlier, you have to reprogram your brain, uh, reading books, listening to tapes like this, listen to videos like this. I mean, back in the days, people were listening to tapes, right? Cassette tapes, right? And, and, and on to you become that person, kind of like us, where failure is just, it's not even failure, it's just data, feedback. You learn what not to do any longer. So that leads me to the next question, man. Um, what do you consider yourself, and I consider yourself a network marketer, internet marketer, entrepreneur, uh, which one of these titles, or maybe you have another one that you like using most for your business, and why? Entrepreneur, I'll say entrepreneur all the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Day, it's just, the what? I'm sorry. So you're saying entrepreneur, you, you're pretty much, you're open. Is that what Yeah, that yeah, yeah, I'm open. I mean, you think about it. I mean, for me personally, like entrepreneurship is, is you know, any, any kind of business, right? I mean, it doesn't matter if you're doing network marketing, if you're doing online marketing, you're affiliate marketing. I mean, they're, they're all business models, right? They're all business models leading to, to, that, to that one thing, you know, to either to buy and sell a product. So, you know, in the, in the grander scheme of things, I would say I, I'm an entrepreneur because, you know, I, I do take risks, right? I do the type of the risk on a, on a daily basis. Calculated risk, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I call it the access to risk. When it's, it's actually funny how we have different terminologies for the same things, essentially. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But it's the same, but it's the same reason why we're still here, you know? Absolutely, yeah. So people always want to say that, oh, it's, it's too risky. So, no, it's not risky. Well, it's risky if you don't educate yourself. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you that much. Now, how yep. big do you think education is for entrepreneurs? Big, huge, man, huge, huge. It's just a constant. Like I said, that's why I showed you my, my book collection. You know, you know, this is just a little bit of. There's more back there, but and but you have speed, and you have speed reading there. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go faster. You know, right? So. I go faster. Speed reading. It doesn't get better than that, man. It doesn't get better than that. That's real life. That's real time, right there, man. It doesn't it's, get better. It's real, man. Yeah, this, yeah. This, this is on my desk. This is, it's not, I want to read so much books. I need to learn how to speed read. Now let's Google and YouTube that. Yeah, <laughs> now, go to okay, Amazon. Now, let's pick it up. up the book. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. Like it's it's a constant, you know, because we're always learning, right? We're always evolving. You know, the world's always changing. So right. it's so key to educate yourself. You know, to invest. You know, we invest heavily in our education. You know, through books, through um, you know, through through media, through audio, right. um, videos. Um, most importantly, events. Like events, I events to me is the most important thing in the world. Dude. Events, events. You know, to the events. Yeah, that's where I met you. That's right. where I met so many, all of my friends, everybody that I, that I, that I hang out with. You know, all yeah. the people I do with, they were all met at events. Right. That all met. And it's fun. We just came back from Vegas, right? Yeah, we just came back from Vegas. See? Yeah. And what happened? It was great. You know, we had a great time. It was yeah. an amazing time, right? Meeting all these people and connecting and. Interconnecting is, is so good, man. I love it. All right. So how would you, what, do you, what is your take on formal education these days? College, specifically, going to school and coming back home with $70,000 to $100,000 in school loans. What is your take on that? Are you aggressively telling people, like, yo, forget that? Or what is your take on that? Well, I mean, it's broken. The system's broken right now, especially in America. I mean, if you, if you travel, you know, we travel a lot. We have a passion for traveling. So if you go anywhere in the world, you'll see that the education system is, is a lot better off as far as, like, the, the prices, right? Now, in America, they charge ridiculous prices to go, go to school. But if you go to any of these countries, you know, they'll lower the price. But still, the system is still broken, right? Um, the people are teaching, you know, outdated ways, you know. Um, I was watching this video online the other day where it was talking about, um, you know, how, how you expect, you know, to put – you know, all these different kinds of minds together in one room and teach them the same thing. You know, you can't teach a, a fish to climb a tree. 
the same way you can teach a, a monkey to climb a tree. So yeah. I feel like with the education that we have today and the and technology, that the educated sibling can be a lot better off to where it's tailored, you know, to to you know to certain people, right? It's tailored, you know, for for that in, in individual. So that's why I like you know online marketing so much because you actually can can dive in there and pick the subjects that you're good at. You know, if you want to do Shopify, you know, do e-commerce, yeah. you can. If you want to just you know do coaching, you can. If you want to do digital, you know, services, you can. Yeah. So you know, it just really fitting people in the category to where they feel you know the most passionate about. And that's one thing that we preach on, man, is live your passion doesn't matter if you're you know like I said, if you're working a job if you're working a business it doesn't matter you know whatever you're doing you gotta be passionate about it so i wish schools will start harping on that more and start teaching people that more instead of saying hey you need to go to school to get a job you know because it's not true you know i, I didn't i didn't finish college right that, that's, become, that's becoming more and more obsolete you know and it's kind of funny that uh, most entrepreneurs they, yeah, at least most successful ones did not finish college. And it goes mm -hmm. back to what we said earlier about, you know, there's always that DNA. They are finished college because I'm Nigerian and by culture and from where we're from, you just got to do it. Not only that, you got to go masters, <laughs> you know. So, but I had that obligation on the back of my head for a long time. As a matter of fact, probably half of my first degree, I didn't pay attention. Uh, I paid attention on the master's degree because I started to look at it as uh, as an entrepreneur. I was like, let me see what I can use this for. And that was why I decided to go from computer engineering. I decided to do uh, the closest to business master's degree at my school at the time, engineering management. And that was really what really started to expose me to uh, to the business world. But the thing is, um, I'm looking at the whole thing, uh, and uh, the average person in my class was not looking at it that way. They were looking to get a job. Right. To get a job with that. Um, if I was looking to get a job, I went straight from first degree to master's degree because um, I never did internship or any of that craziness, which, by the way, made it difficult for anybody to want to hire me because I have no experience. So that tells you, that gives you an idea of, what, of what's going on in, the, in, the, in that world. I think, I, I, think, I think I'm really getting closer and closer to aggressively just telling people, like, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Because... I, most of the master's degree I told you was online education. Like uh, a lot of the classes, oh, right. don't uh, so we would go in something maybe once a week or something to meet. But but it was you know it was starting to get popular back in '05. It was starting to get popular, but now you see a lot of online classes and stuff like that. You know, even universities are doing that. But forget online formal education. You could literally get on YouTube and educate yourself in anything you want. True. Get better than the people that are actually doing it in a class setting, you know. So that's what we're getting, man. So I just I wanted to I wanted to touch on that. So let's go let's go into some real deal stuff right now, man. Uh, just in case you wonder, the if you my 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 Instagram right now is at fifteen uh, k plus almost sixteen. Wow. And uh, that's my personal, you know. I actually have a I have a couple with uh, 15, 13k for different purposes. So that's quite a few exposure out there uh, online. And Travis actually uh, mentored me for that. So um, how big is Instagram for you guys right now? Instagram? Yeah. You know what, it's funny, man, because Instagram, they, they changed you know, over, the, over the years. You know, I started marketing heavy on Instagram a few years ago, and I really started mastering you know, how to market on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But now we shifted things over to, to mainly uh, Facebook, you know, Facebook, Facebook advertising. This one you have just a couple. Yeah, exactly. You have a bigger like like audience there, but right. Instagram is great. You know, it's been and you great. You tap into Instagram from there. Obviously, it's part of the Facebook network. Yeah, so we use Instagram a, a different nowadays. We use it to more like retarget people. You know, uh, people that went you know to Facebook and vice versa. Instagram to, to to Facebook. So you know, it's a great. great deal. And but, you know, one thing I you know from from going through your course at the time, I picked up a lot of the automated stuff. Right, uh, but uh, I got a lot more from that than just automation. Right, um, mm -hmm. one thing I got out of it was uh, the attraction part of it. You know, the attraction mark because you always nailed in the attraction marketing part. Uh, it wasn't just about spamming everywhere with uh, with uh, content that's not even related to the hashtag. <laughs> right, right. It wasn't about that. Right, it was about uh, doing what people want. What I actually got out of it was that when you click like on somebody's photo they like you back even without clicking like yet 
but they they you just got on their right side if you read the book uh how to influence um how to influence uh people and win friends right like the uh, uh it was about paying attention to what people are looking for and give it to them right you get what you want so when you click on people's photo or you comment on their photo that's what people are walking around the internet looking for when oh, they love it they love it right they just I just got a like, right? Yeah. I just got a comment. Somebody's commenting on me. I don't even know who this person is, but they're cool. Right, right, right. It's cool. It's pretty cool. You don't know why. And people have a tendency to follow you back, right? And, um, and then people start following you like that. Now, if you want, later on, you can start on following and all that stuff. That gets into the automated stuff, right? But uh, that's actually more of what I got out of it. I got to figure out, listen, if I like people's photos, I comment on people's photos, and I can do it on a massive scale, and I uh, can actually connect with those that wants to engage. Uh, this business doesn't get any any better than that. Yep. Now on Facebook, you're on Facebook right now. Uh, are you doing long form posts or are you doing videos? Wh which one is working for you right now? We we do all kinds, man. I mean, for so long we've been using for years we've been using uh, the, the long story ad posts. Uh -huh. and, and people love it like the customers love it you know because they, they got to learn about you know you, you know who you are your story your journey right right without being you know pushy at all so we've been using the, the long story post you know for for years now i mean we now do you know video ads the videos. Uh, yeah one of the things that we've been testing now has been working really great has been blog posts you know sending people straight to our blog you know from facebook collecting the audience and then from there retargeting them when and they retarget yeah, yeah. So it's been working amazing, you know. That's why we love Facebook because, or we just love social media in general. It doesn't matter if it's Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Right. It's because you know, it's, people are living on there, right? People live there, so you know, it's a good place. You know, it's an easy place to connect with people. You know, have conversations with them. And like you said, you know, people are just looking for that that connection, man. Like we're, we're humans, man. Yeah, think about you know what humans want. Humans just want to, you know be accepted you know be wanted you know they want to be heard right so if you give them that platform right you give them that chance you know they love it they love you for it so love that's why you said it's so powerful that like is so powerful that comment is so powerful because it's all about engaging with each other right that's why social media is there to engage with each other whether if you're not you know selling anything and you know i, I will never go into the intention is i, I want to sell something I, i'll go with the intention is I want to provide value to that person's life. I want that person to have a breakthrough because I know if I create a breakthrough for that person in their mm -hmm. life, whether it's my social media posts, my ads, you know, through engaging with them, having a conversation, having a conversation with them, mm -hmm. I know that they're going to better their life. So whenever they need something, you know, regarding to what I'm, I'm offering or selling, they're going to think of, of me first. So it's all about having that, that one-on-one -on -one interaction with people, man. Absolutely. Now, for those people that will listen to us just in the past one, two minutes, and be like, I just got so much like, but then they quit the business six months from now. Um, can you touch on, you don't make money from likes. Can you connect the dots real quick? You don't make oh, money. Oh, yeah. You know, you don't make money. <laughs> but it, it's true. I always, I always, you know, see that. I used to see that a lot before, but I don't say as much. But people are like, oh, you don't, you don't make money from likes. and get money from... I mean, yeah, yeah, you don't make money from it, but you kind of do if you trace it, right? Because once you somebody likes your post, right, it goes on their friend's walls, and it, there's a viral effect that happens, right, which gives right. you more exposure. Because if you go to any traditional business owner, the number one thing they're looking for is exposure. They're yeah. looking to be seen. By that's it. I, I, mm -hmm. that, that's it. So if you get if the more likes you get, the more people are seeing you, and the more people that are connecting with you. So it, it is a currency to know. Um, you know, if you're posting good stuff or not, you know, it's actually a really good currency to find out if you're, if you're giving your audience what, what they want, right. you know, if you're getting enough engagement, enough likes, you know, on your post. So with likes, they mean, they mean something, man. They mean a lot. They, people like your stuff. That's why they're there, right? <laughs> right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now let's talk about, uh, profitability, right? I, I don't just stop at profitability. Um, my concern for a lot of people in this industry, even those that are already successful to a certain point, my concern is not profitability because they know uh, they actually they created that, you know, in the past, right? Uh, but we also know that past success is not really success, <laughs> right? Um, sustainability is something that I question people a lot on, right? From your experience in the past few years, how... Have you, have you paid attention to sustainability? What kind of uh, struggles, anything like that? 
uh, just been real, tell people like, hey, I made 10 grand last month, now what, <laughs> right? Oh my God, I made two grand for the next two months, <laughs> right? Um, sustainability, how big is that? Is that something you guys are paying attention to now? No, absolutely. That's why it starts with, um, you know, personal branding, right? And I know for, you know, for newbies, they'll say, I don't worry about branding and stuff like that, but I say worry about it at least a little bit. Because when you have the right, when you have the right branding, you have the right audience base, the right list, right? The, you know, you're, you have a raving, you know, audience that's, you know, no matter what you put out, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, they're going to be following you. So to me, what's just an inability is just building that, you know, that tribe-like, you know, uh, culture within, you know, your, your community. So, yeah. so that you don't have the up and down, down months. Yeah, we know, of course, that happens, you know. But did that, did that knowledge come from experience for you? The, the what? That knowledge. Did that come from experience for you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because when I first started, you know, I first started for myself, uh, I used to call myself Good Life Trav, right? You know, when I first started in, 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 this, in this online space. Right. And people started catching on to it. And people were actually calling me, you know, at events. Hey, Good Life Trav. So, you know, so message me, Good Life Trav. And, you know, that was my branding. And then I kind of stepped away, away from that and just, you know, stuck to my name. But then... When we started building limitless lifestyle, that's when I really seen, you know, how you know branding and sustainability, you know, played a major part, you know, especially with our, with our audience base. Because you know, we can literally like, you know, survey our list, find out uh, what their wants and needs are, right, and then create, you know, a course, a product, or whatever based around that, and then releasing it to, to them. And next thing you know, they, they buy because you know you created that sustainability, you know, within your business. You, know, you created that fan base in your business. I mean. Think, of, think about Beyonce, right? I remember a few years ago, Beyonce did something incredible that I, I still think about, you know, to this day. She released uh, her album without telling anybody, without her fan, without telling any media. You know, mm -hmm. She released it on Instagram to her, yeah. to her Instagram followers. I don't even yeah. remember that. Yeah. But that album went crazy. Like, yeah. she sold, like, a million, like, overnight. Like, oh, it was man. nuts. Yep. She, she got that fan base. She got that sustainability. You know, yeah. same thing. She, she released perfume. She released shoes. Clothing, bam, money, because she built that fan base. She built that sustainability. So, I mean, that's, that's what I say that saves, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, when they built that brand. You know, you know why I have that, you know why I have that smile on my face, right? <laughs> you know, like we were saying earlier, like, there's a lot of things that you will say differently, I will say differently. We use different terminologies, but the same exact concept. You know, for the past three months or so right now, I've been yelling at the top of my lungs, like, yo, you know, I call it the green traffic system. Uh, don't drive traffic unless you're building a brand. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, you man. have success, but it's going to be overnight. It's going to be uh, gone again. You're going to be, and then you're going to burn through your money. But the only way, the, if you look in our space, the people that have sustainability like that are people that have a brand. Mm -hmm. People that have a brand. And how do you build a brand? Let me ask you that question. How do you build a brand? How do you build a brand? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, let, let's see comes off the top of my head. But uh, yeah. really, if you're starting with your let, mission and vision. Let, let me be clear. You don't have a brand yet. You're coming online for the first time. How do for you the first time. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all, you know, first it starts out, you know, with your, with your personal mission and vision, right? What do you see for, for yourself in the future, right? What do you see for your family? You know, what do you see for your organization? Mm -hmm. That's what I, I I start with, you know. I start with the mission and vision, right? And then from there, you start cu cultivating um yourself. And the cool thing about branding, you don't have to have like a, a cool name or anything like that. Branding can be just your name. Yeah, it can be just your name, you know. And I told most people, this is your right? name, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like really, like branding is not you know some fancy name. I know we have you know limits lifestyle. You know we have all this you know logos on school stuff. Right. But as an individual, you can brand your name yourself, mm -hmm. right? And you start building your brand by doing what? Sharing your story. Sharing your story. You share your story, your brand starts building. You know why? Because then we start sending share. The more you share your story, the more people know your story, the more that, hey, that's that guy that that uh, was working an engineering job that, you know, a couple years ago. Now he's, you know, living the life. Or that's that girl that she is, uh, you know, on her way to, you know, change the world. I mean, whatever, whatever it is, man, if you, if you share your personal story on a consistent yeah. basis, that's how you build your brand, 100%. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, when you share a story, uh, people receive value from that. They do. You know, and because uh, you, uh, no matter where you're coming from in life, there's someone that can relate with you. 
uh, there's someone that can resonate with your energy. Uh, there's somebody like right now that that would rather listen to what I'm saying right now from you rather than me, you know. And and it's a big old place, and there's enough for everybody. The part where most people miss it is that no one is consistent enough to the point where they start seeing uh, seeing that kind of result. Um, sharing your story, you know, people say my story, and then they have one piece of content. As a matter of fact, we're getting in our membership right now, we're getting people on a 30 days challenge, uh, Google Me Story Challenge, right? Where um, when you Google your name, what do you find? Uh, that makes a lot of difference right there, you know? So we're, 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 we're starting to make a lot of noise about that, and that, let's not forget, taps back into sustainability. If you make five grand last month, if you want to make that five grand over and over, and you want it to just grow, wow, where, even if Beyonce tried to kill a brand right now, it's impossible. Literally. It's impossible. You can't do it. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. Her, her fans probably won't, would not believe her. They'd be like, we you messing around. Like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, stop. <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> like, stop, stop. Yeah. Um, you know, I tell people, like, people like us, we can't die. You know, there's no such thing as death for us because, uh, will build a brand that's bigger than life itself, mm -hmm. you know, because bigger than just your body. This is the only thing that can die, body, right? No, but when you, build, when you build a, a, a name or, you, or people know you for something, whatever it is they know you for, you may not even know it yet until it starts happening. That's why we say start with your name, right? Start with your name, share your story. Something unique about your story that people will start uh, attaching themselves to Eventually, you find out what that is, and all you have to do is stick that data and roll with it, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Let's go to sales and conversion. What's your mindset when it comes to sales and conversion? Yeah, sales and conversion. What's your mindset on that? My mindset on sales and conversion. Like, as far as what? Like, um, you know, how do I approach it or... Yeah, so we know that we attract likes. Eventually, somebody clicks on your lead on your page. They're on your page, uh, they convert it to lead. Uh, when you put in your sales message together, I saw the, the, the funnel that you guys just put together uh, with Ella driving the, the stuff, right? What's your mindset? What are you trying to, what's, what's your mindset when you're trying to put the science part of it together, if possible, even some of the part uh, in, in making people feel comfortable to take the next move? Well, my mindset when you know with selling conversion when it comes to that is, um, I look and see what kind of product I'm selling first, whether it's high ticket or, or, or low, low ticket. You know, if it's high ticket, right, um, I'll provide like ten times the amount of value, right. You know, before I sell that at ticket. So, for example, you know, we we're selling our um, our Facebook course, you know, for 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 the past year now, and that that course is going anywhere from five hundred to to a thousand, you know. Uh, so we will, we will sell it, you know, through webinars where we're actually teaching people, you know, exactly what we do step by step, you know, on Facebook, like giving them everything we can within, mm -hmm. within an hour, but we give them so much value that by the time they leave, they know they can take something away and apply in, in their life. Right. So it's back to what I was saying before, you know, I, we want to create a breakthrough, right? We want you to have a, a, oh my God, I get it. You know, I get it moment. Right. Right. Once they have that get it moment, then everything is fall the sales follow. People are gonna be begging to buy your product. Right. right? Same with the the funnel that you saw that released recently. You know, it's it's a low ticket item. So okay. what we did, even as a low ticket item, we put together a three video training series where we're educating people on the basics, you know, of you know, putting together an online online business. Where at the end we're gonna provide them you know, uh, a low ticket item where they can learn even more. So that's my mindset really. I wanna create a breakthrough in their head. I want them to fall in love with us first, right? Know who we are, like, tr like, and trust us. Because once, once I know they, they do that, yeah, they will buy whatever you know you have. Even if they don't buy right away, trust me, they're in your head. You know, we have customers that bought that we met a year ago, two years ago. They're just buying now, right? right? So if you're constantly providing that value. You're gonna get the, the, the conversions, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree with that. So it comes down to value. You just you put a ton of value away. Yeah, man. That's all it is. It's all about building that list, right? Building that, cultivating that list. Yeah. It, it's funny. I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, man, it, we can literally build a list in any niche. You know, I can go after that, the health niche, uh, put together, you know, a, a free value, you know, for, you know, a product in health, 
build a list, and then from there, offer them a product. You know, so it works for any industry. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. It's all you also want to create that that list, right? You know, create right. that that audience. You know, and then from there, give them that value, and then provide them, you know, something, you know, fulfill, fulfill their wants and needs, right? With your right. product, because your product is supposed to do that. Your product is supposed to solve their problem. That's right. why they're buying your product to solve whatever problem they're dealing with at that time, right? That your product is going to solve. So that's what I look at it, you know, with selling conversion. I'm not looking like, oh, just buy it because it's great. No, you buy it because it's going to solve your problem. I don't want you to buy our product if it's not going to solve your problem because then you're going to be pissed off and you're going to refund anyways, right. right? So if it's going to solve your problem, then of course, you know, here's the solution. Right. So some people, um, I want to move on to, to, to the industry, right? To the, uh, I've been corrected in the past. It's not industry, it's profession, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's profession, whatever, potato, potato, right? This uh, space of network marketing, uh, more, more, you know, uh, back in probably 09 or 10, 2010, uh, you had, uh, you know, people are just coming online for the first time, you know? But now it's pretty much the same world. I mean, you have uh, uh, companies like uh, Wake Up Now, I think it's disappeared actually. Uh, but uh, you have uh, companies that dominated Instagram, that, you know, were all over the place on Instagram, just trying to recruit people. Uh, message me right now, text me, message me right now, blah, blah, blah. If you, you see all these companies, a lot of them come and go, some of them are around, you know. So a gentleman yesterday was like, oh, you know, there's this other company that we know of that, uh, he, he messaged me, said, hey, you still promoting this? I was like, uh, no, not since 2011. And it was like, uh, why is it that all the leaders left that company? And, and I told him, I said, because they can. They have the skills. They can promote whatever they want. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, that led me down to asking, do you have the skills? <laughs> uh, because uh, that's the ultimate of it, you know. But, um, my, my, but, I still, but people have these questions, right? Well, what, are you, what are your thought process when it comes down to people jumping from deal to deal, jumping on bandwagons. Where are you right now with that, personally? I mean, it all depends on who you are, man. I mean, there's so many people out there that, that, do, that do do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, it's okay because we're living in a free enterprise. So uh, I don't think there's nothing wrong with it particularly. It's just, it depends on what, on who you want to be known as, right? You want to be known as the guy that jumps you know, from deal to deal, or you want to be known as, as a guy that you know, stays in one place, right? Right. It's, up, it's up to you on what you want your, your brand to be. But one thing I will tell you is, like you said, if you don't have the skills, you can't do that anyways. You can't, you know, can't jump around or promote multiple things. You just can't. So it just all starts with, you know, getting that, that one skill. And yeah. to, to be honest, man, the people that are asking that question, you know, just, just worry about you, man. Worry about what feels good to you on the, on the inside. <laughs> are you doing the right thing? Great, mm -hmm. you know, of course, people are going to come and go. And this, this is not a job, man. We're living, this is business. It's not a right? job. This is business. Exactly. So you never know what that leader was thinking in, in their mind, right? Yeah. Not only are they thinking about their family, family, but now they're thinking about their team. They're thinking, man, I got this team of people that are following me. Yeah. I need to lead them into, you know, something that's going to make them money. It's going to get them a result. So that's why you see a lot of these leaders, you know, they'll jump from, from thing to thing to thing because company owners, you know, are not fulfilling, you know, their, their, their promises, right? And you see that a lot, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. You know, that's why, you know, things happen, you know, a certain way. So, what I say to people that do that, I say, hey, if it makes you feel good, man, then do it. If it's giving you a direct result, if it's helping the people around you, then yeah, you know, by all means, do it, man. And I see people that are, are doing that, their team is winning. Like, it's, it's crazy, yeah. you know, this new success. Yeah. That people have. Absolutely, man. This is true. Um, I just, you know, for a long time now, I've just, I noticed that jumping around can be a business model on its own, <laughs> right? That's just what I do. I, some people call it multiple streams of income, right? Mm -hmm. But we know the balance is if you don't have the skills to sponsor, recruit, make sales, create sales, create value in the marketplace. If you don't have that, um, then all you're going to do is just burn the money all over the place. You know? Right, true. Uh, but so, so you, you definitely got to figure out what you want to do. I worry about you and... You're right. A lot of people worry about their family. If you are working a deal and the deal is not moving as fast as it used to be or the conversion is not great anymore or, and your senses, just your own little human brain in your head says, hey, move on. 
You got to do that for your family. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. You don't know what's going on. Like, I, I, I can never judge somebody, man. I can't dare judge anybody because you don't know what they're going on with, you know, internally, right? You don't know what's going on with their background, right? So, I mean, for the people, you know, the one thing that I learned was getting a skill. You know, of course, you can, you can, you can hop into this industry, but within this industry, you want to find something that you're actually good at. You know, some people that are really good at writing, some yeah. people that are really good at doing videos, some people that, like me, I was good at, I'm good at generating traffic, right? Yeah. So I hone in that skill and I'm really good at that in marketing, right? So just find yourself a skill, something, find something in the industry that you're really good at right? and just hone on it and just, and just attack it and master it, man. Just like how I did. I saw, I saw I really achieved my success when I started, when I discovered that I was good on Instagram, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm good at this. Let me, let me focus a little bit more on this yeah. and leave everything else aside. And I did. I left everything else. I left Facebook ads aside. I left solo ads, YouTube, everything that, Everything that they were saying you should do, I left that aside and just focused on Instagram on itself. That's it. I wasn't doing any paid advertising for like almost two years, right? Mm. I focused on it. But what happened as a result of focusing, I became the expert in that field where people knew me, right, mm. as the Instagram, you know, mar marketing expert, mm. right? So right. Really for, for anybody that's listening here, you know, find something that, that you really resonate with in the industry and become a master at it. Become right. a master you probably do the same thing, you know, because you have that one skill, man. Like, the same team thing, does it. Yeah, yeah same, thing, same thing. SEO brought us to the forefront, too. It was just all That's about right. the rest Yeah, yeah. I, I, learned, I learned SEO from you. I remember when I first saw you in one of those uh, Costa Rica intensive videos. That's the first all time right. I came across you. And I was at that time working a job, you know, and I, and I was, I scraped up $500 to buy that course back then, believe it or That's not. And the first time I seen you, I was like, oh, that dude look cool. And, you know, and I met you at an event. Two months later, right? So thank you for sharing that, man. Thank you for sharing that. You know, every time I hear that, I get goosebumps, man. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know, Jesse Singh, right? Yeah, yeah. He just told me the same thing at the event in Vegas. It's crazy, man. Really? Yeah. Jesse is like the god of SEO right now. Man. That's crazy, and that's that's what happens when you when you give value, you know, impact. You put a lot of impact out there, and you just don't know how far it will go. But thank you. That. that was years ago. You put that. See, so people are listening, guys. Ola put their training on years ago. Yeah, two thousand years ago, and it's still having impact in people's lives to this day. Like, I, 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 I'm gonna find it. Man. I'm gonna find it and put it. Put, probably put it on the channel so people can find it. You don't have to, man. It's a good training, you know. The, yeah. you know, show people how to do SEO, you know. You know, you know the 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 the, the thing about that training was, it, I I was informed that I was coming out there to help with training, but um, but it was just if you noticed, all I had was uh, I think I had a a, a marker. That's it. It was in a white tee. And uh, for like 30 minutes, I just went in on the fundamentals of what we call search engine optimization. And it still yep. works for today. Maybe the only thing that's different is the social signals, which is essentially just backlinks. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy, man. Now, what do you see yourself in five years, man? In five years, man, in a whole new world. In a whole new world. Building, a, building our business. Yeah. You know, changing a lot of people's lives. Impacting lives and impacting the environment. I mean, we have some big goals here at Limitless Lifestyle, man. We really want to impact change on a, on, a grander, on a grander scheme, right? We want to really, you know, wake people up, right? Raise a, a higher consciousness within the world, you know, through our education, you know, through our mentorship. Mm -hmm. You know, just show people that there's a better way, right? You know, yeah. you, I mean, like I said, the, the main thing that we focus on is passion, man. It's really focused on your passion. passion. I like that. I like that, man. Cause I've been so long, man. Even in this industry, like I felt like I was dragging for for a while, man. I was like, man, like I'm just here dragging. But once I figured out what my passion was, man, that yeah. that changed my that changed my life, man. Right. Really did. Right. Really work within your passions, like it's night and day. It don't feel like work. Like every day we wake up and it's like no alarm clock, you know. Sometimes we do catch a flight or whatever, but right. but it's just waking up every day, you know, just feeling fulfilled, you know, just feeling fulfilled, doing the stuff that you love, right? Yeah. Now we just came back from Vegas from an event, right? Uh, you saw the Rara, right? They did a good job of hyping people up, whatever, you know, they did all those things, right? And I was out there with a mastermind. I noticed something personally. I noticed that that event, as usual, solidifies a lot of things for me, right? But it solidifies something different for the newbies, maybe people that's just scrambling, trying to figure out this business, right? Uh, some people say, oh, I'm going to push this deal faster right now. 
I'm seeing something else, right? I'm st something's still solidified for me because I see a lot of people personally that I can help get to the next level. That's what I'm right. saying, right? And I get inspired to want to do that more, right? And majority of the people in that room are inspired to want to promote that particular deal more, right? Did you experience the same thing? Are you at that stage in your business where you're not fizzled by what your passion is? and what you know you're supposed to be, well, of course, you're still pumped. Did you go through that same thing? No, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely pushed me up. I mean, that doesn't make me say, hey, I want to push this deal more. You know, it just makes me know, like, hey, I want to help more people. You know, there's more people out there. Because in, in reality, we weren't going to go to that. event. You know, us as Limited Slots are. I only went because of Vegas. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, with Vegas, of course. But, but you know, we weren't going to go, right? right? But then we were talking about it, and I was like, man, like, like, guys, man, we need to go to the event, man. Forget the company. Yeah. You know, forget this. Forget that. Like, I think about my first event, right? When, yeah. I, when I met you, when I met all these other leaders, when I connected with people. Like, it's all about the connections and bonds, right? It's all about connecting with people. Forget the event, man. To me, it was it's all about meeting people, connecting, you know, having conversations, ha having breakthroughs. Yes. Right? So when I, when I went to that event, I went with that mindset that I'm going to, you know, to have a breakthrough. I'm going to you know, meet people, connect yeah. with people, have those genuine connections, right? Yeah. And even when I left, I, I left with that same thing. Like, man, this is amazing. Like, I, I will always come to events because of that, because the people that you get to meet, right? And of course, it pushes you to, you know, I, I guess it's at the point in my business, I'm, I'm already on autopilot. I'm already go, 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 yeah, right? Yeah. I'm already, uh, before the event, it, it ain't taking an event to, to pump, pump me up. Right. But the reason I'm saying that is because I went to so many events in the past. Yeah. Right. So now it is. back to what we said in the beginning, programming, right? Programming. programming. Absolutely. The first event, I was pumped like, oh, yeah. But now I'm pumped every day. Why? Because right. I program myself. You know, it's back to, to the books, you know, back to, you know, getting around the people, educating yourself, you know, going to events, you know. So right. for, for me, it's different. So for the people that are, are watching out there, you know, just keep going. Keep right. going to events. Even if yeah. you don't. I got the money. Get mm -hmm. the money to do it. We we'll get the money. Money is a byproduct, man. It's a byproduct of all these old things. It's yeah. Energy. Yeah. Money is energy, man. Now, now you're talking about uh, you're talking about um, the event. Is it the same event in Atlanta, 2012? Is that the same event? No, um, no. Actually, I went uh, first. I went first event I went to uh, for that particular company was in Austin. In Austin, okay. Austin, Texas, yeah. Austin, that's yeah. the first one. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, Austin was a good one too, man. I always like to, every chance I get, I just give, uh, because a lot of people that went through that situation uh, with David Wood, um, he's, he was my first interview here. Um, so I always like to give uh, credit to whom honor is due, you know, because uh, uh, forget the compliance, like, I, like we keep saying, forget the companies. You got to learn about this. Right. Uh, it's about leaving impact on people that will change their life forever, but people will move on. People will move on, people will do things, but if you, if you, do, if you play your cards right, uh, which starts from being consistent and staying in the game, never quit on yourself, uh, you'll be fine. Now, team building. I notice you guys are heavy in that. I'm not talking about the team building, downline building. That's not what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? I'm talking about team building. It's two different things, right? And people, I want people to understand that. Can you, Explain team building and how it's different from downline building. Well, team building is, is uh, education, right? It's, it's motivating your, your people. You know, it's giving them the tools, the resources, you know, mm -hmm. to succeed so that they can go and, and, do, and do, their, do their own thing, right? They can be self uh, sufficient, right? right? You know, if you look at it the other way, like you said, you know, uh, downline building where you're just recruiting, 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 and just putting people down there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's great. You're going to have like a a cool little foundation on, under you, but right. then that foundation is going to be wobbly, right? Yeah. It's going to be wobbly to where, next thing you know, if one little piece falls, the whole thing falls, right? Yeah. Now, you know, building is actually cultivating your people, right? Providing them with the education, you know, um, you know, with the support so that they can, you know, work on their mindset pretty much, you know, they're working on their, on their mind, mm -hmm. mindset, first and foremost. Because once you work on that, something can happen within an organization to where it wouldn't even affect you, right? It wouldn't yeah. even affect you. Because right. you work on your team that much, right? Right, right. Now, you guys, uh, tell us a little bit about the Limitless Lifestyle. Yeah, sure. You know, we're a company, is myself, uh, my, you know, myself, uh, my two business partners, 
uh, Brian Dixon and George Converse. Uh, we actually uh, started about about a, uh, back in Barcelona when we actually started to uh, travel together. Uh, mm -hmm. We just came back from an event, right? And we we're like, hey, you know, um, myself and Brian were like, hey, we're gonna go to to Spain. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna go visit for like a month. And then George, mm -hmm. um, you know, he was there in the in the mix, you know, for the event. And he was like, hey, George, why don't you come along, you know, with us? And mm -hmm. it, him being, you know, a little newer to the industry than myself and Brian was, he was like, oh yeah, sure, let's do it. So next thing you know, we took a trip to, you know, Barcelona, Spain, and that's where it all started, man. We, we noticed that the chemistry between us was, was, was magical. You know, right. we all shared, you know, the same vision, the same mission. So that's when Limitless Lifestyle was, was really born. You know, and all of us, we have different skill sets, you know, like myself, I'm more of the, you know, the operation guy, you know, the, the, the marketing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Brian, you know, he does more of the, you know, the CEO type duties. Uh, he does, you know, like the Facebook and the advertising, stuff like that. And, and George is more of the, the coach, right? He coaches, you know, the, the, the sales guys, the sales team, mm -hmm. you know, and does most of the more you're talking about, the team building, the, the yeah. coaching, coaching right. stuff, right? Right, right. So then putting all the skills together, we form a limitless lifestyle, you know, and, you know, what we do, you know, we provide people with educational, you know, trainings, or online marketing. We also do digital ad service services. So you know, okay. anything from people set up their, their Facebook pages, their funnels, writing their stories that we're talking about, you know, anything that don't put the pieces together. Because what, what we find a lot in this world, in this current world we're in, mm -hmm. we're living in the technology world. But a lot of people don't know how to work the technology. Right. So, you know, that's a way for us not only to create income, you know, for our company, but also, most importantly, is to help people get their business set up. That's where people get stuck. People yeah. understand the concepts and everything, but when it comes to technology and stuff, mm -hmm. that's where we got that hiccup. So, you know, we provide people with that extra help, you know, to, you know, to get their business set up. So that's what we do in a nutshell, in this lifestyle, you know. You know, Absolutely. we help people build their business based on, on their passion. Now, with, uh, with regards to technology, you know, um, you know, that's always uh, an objection, if you will, or uh, uh, some type of uh, obstacle that hold people back. And, uh, and I always tell, I always ask them, I said, do you have a smartphone? If you have a smartphone, um, that really will not be qualified as, uh, as an excuse, okay? Because when it was time for you to change your flip phone, uh, to iPhone or smartphones, uh, you did not say that. You just found it was cool. And you went and bought one, and you started to play with it. And you figured it out. And you figured it out, <laughs> right? And I always tell people, like, listen, in this business, it's the same thing. Don't you find getting results, living your lifestyle, don't you find that really cool? Now go out and buy it and get started. If there's something you can't figure out, you have the likes of, uh, there are companies out here that will help you uh, figure out what you need to figure out. Educational, there forget there are free YouTube videos, right? On anything that will help you figure out. It's one layer at a time. One thing that people don't understand is that once you figure out that one layer, you're now ahead of most people because most people, most right. people always give themselves excuses, you know. But if you just become that person that says, no excuse, what is it? I need to learn how to what? To move ahead up? I'm not saying spend time on that, but, but yeah. you figure it out. If you have to pay somebody to get that done, you pay to get it done because it needs yeah, to get you it do. done. You get it done. Yeah, exactly. That's why people are skillful at what they do, right? You know, you right. just find people. Sources like Fiverr, like Odesk. When, yeah. I started, when I first started in online marketing, I was outsourcing like everything. I was outsourcing my blogging. You know, I was paying somebody five bucks a blog, right. you know, to write my blog post, you know, I was paying for, you know, for traffic, you know, there's just all these little things that we're not good at that right. just other people are good at. You can go ahead and pay them, right? Right. So, so the like first said, step, oh, what it takes to get it done. <laughs> so the first step was that you knew that you would, you had to have a blog, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you knew you had to get done. How it's going to get done? We'll always sort that out. I'll do it. If I can't do it, I'll get somebody to do it, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right there. That's entrepreneur right there. Now, we so let I, I wanted to bring another that the question back in a little bit different form. We're talking about the DNA of our entrepreneur, right? Um, do you? I want to bring it out in a different form. Do you think entrepreneurs are born or or can be learned? Man, that's an interesting question. I think I think a combination of both, man. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I can't say that, man, because you've seen people that that are 
that didn't come from the background of entrepreneurship they still mm -hmm. made it so if i didn't come from an entrepreneur background okay but um, somehow I, I am one today you know same with you right so i don't think they're born i think they're, they're really created right around their, their circumstances right something in their life told them like hey you should go down this path right right absolutely and uh if we if we get into which one do you think is riskier right now uh and, and try not to be try to be objective about it right which one is riskier being an entrepreneur or maintaining a job which one is riskier right now i think i think maintaining a job is riskier for the simple fact is is that you're putting your faith in somebody else's hands right yeah so but it also also lies down to the skills once you have the skills right and you know you're the best at the best you can be at right mm -hmm. that's not gonna matter right that job can go away but you know tomorrow you can get another job right so it all, all comes down to the skills but you know to answer your question i think that you know having a job is a lot a lot more riskier because you're putting your faith in somebody else's hands right right now so that's the main reason yeah. now what would you say to somebody who says um what about benefits insurance i got babies at home I got all this. I got that. What do you say to this? Go online and get insurance, man. It's not that hard. <laughs> Obama like, care, right? Obama just care. Just pay for it out of pocket, right? Like it might cost you like two hundred dollars more a month or whatever, or whatever the cost may be, right? Right. But pay for yourself. I mean, you're paying for it. If you look, if you look at your pay paycheck stuff, you pay for it. Up <laughs> your money, right? Yeah. yeah, you get a discount. Yeah, but like, come on, like you can get it on your own, man. You can buy it on your own. Right, right. We got insurance. We buy insurance. Like it's not. It's, I, I know insurance are the rates are crazy in America, but yeah. Hey. Well, you got. You know? the, 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 it's still. It's still just. It's riskier. Period. It's just riskier. Uh, you know, when I when I started back in two thousand and five, I used to, I used to, you know, I used to be very aggressive with entrepreneurship. I just told everybody, forget that. You need to be an entrepreneur. Period. Everything else is a. So two years later, I'm like, wait, somebody has to push him up, right? <laughs> Somebody's going to have to do that, uh, which is still a, a demeaning way of saying it, but that's what I started to say. Like, nah, that's okay, you could be. But then, again, in 2000, the market crashed in 2008. In 2010, I'm like, um, I don't, if you ask me, here's the thing, I don't give unsolicited advice. If you came to this video, you came to this video, right? Right. But I don't give on solicited advice any longer. But if you ask me, I'm always gonna tell you, like, listen, if you ask that question, you probably have a level of entrepreneurial thing in you. That's why you're asking me. They're trying to figure out if you if you have to ask that question, uh, you need to go for it. You need to go for your dream. You need to uh uh but tap into your passion, you know. Uh, right. I tell people all the time when they come into this arena, you have something, especially if you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you have something that you did in your life, in your lifestyle, that I feel like you can, um, that you can use in this arena as well too, uh, on the freelance level, on the free enterprise uh, level. Now, you guys moved back to the United States, you guys after traveling so much, right? Um, you know, that's one of the biggest dreams for a lot of people. People want to travel. They want to travel the world. What made, I'm, I'm sure you guys will still travel, but you want to settle a little bit, right? What made yeah, you right. decide to settle a little bit? What's going on? You don't have babies yet, do you? No, no, not yet, not yet. Okay. But, uh, but past like two years, um, mm -hmm. well, together we're traveling the past, past, past year, but myself personally, i um, traveling for the past two years now, literally like nonstop, like going around the world, man. And I loved it. You know, I learned you know, so much. It, it, it can be stressful, don't get me wrong. Because right? okay. we're moving from place to place. But usually we'll do it to where it was like, we'll stay in a place for like two, three weeks, even yeah. a month, and then switch locations from there. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a point where I was doing it like almost every other day. I was going, like when I, when I did my, my Euro trip, I was staying in places for like a week, you know, a couple of days and going to the next spot, the next spot while working my business. And believe mm -hmm. it or not, it's, it's crazy. That's a cool part by having the, the laptop and you know a cell phone, yeah. right? Yep. You can work this business from anywhere in the world, right? So I guess it was an adjustment period, you know, um, to traveling and working your business, but it was definitely worth it because I learned so much from not only about the world, but yeah. most importantly about, about myself, right? So after traveling for so long, uh, our business was, was growing. It was growing like a lot, right? It kept growing and growing and growing. So we're like, hey, we need 
you know, place. Because, you know, cause the thing about traveling, too, in the online marketing world, mm -hmm. right, is when you do travel and you, you say you miss two, three days because of traveling, you're missing, like, a few weeks in your business, you know, because every day is, like, a week in your business in the online marketing world. You know? That's why it's really calculated as that. So for us, we're like, you know what, we need to stay in one place, you know, get, get a home base here in Scottsdale, Arizona. We um, ended up locking down this um, beautiful, you know, um, uh, six, what, six, seven bedroom mansion, 11,000 11, square foot yeah. mansion here in Scottsdale, Arizona, you know, for myself and, and, and the team. Nice and, stuff, you know, man. We got a home base. Huh? I said, nice stuff, man. We got to visit. Oh, definitely, man. You got to come through, man. The views yeah. are amazing out there, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we decided to get home base because, you know, we really wanted to expand this vision more, right? And really to service our customers more. But we're still going to travel, but not as much as, you know, we used to in the past. So, you know, it's well, been great, man. thing is that you got that out of your system, too, because, yeah. um, because I, I feel like everyone should get that out of the system. Um, you know, do a lot of travel while you can. Um, and then the rest of it, you could you could set about set apart uh, two or three times a year to just go away somewhere for a weekend and come through. Um, I'm so excited about what I do that I can't stay away from work. I love it, you know. So even if I go away for a weekend or something like that, I'm excited to come home and get to work. So not only that, I took my laptop by the way with me. <laughs> so. Now, speaking of laptop and, 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 and cell phone, we're attracting a lot of people right now using mobile, mobile landing pages. We're making sure everything is mobile up sometimes. And we're attracting a lot of people that may be a little bit naive uh, with the idea that you can run your business from, um, from, uh, from, from, uh, from a cell phone. What do you, what's your take on that? Man, it's amazing. There's always with us, right? You know, people, you know, text messages on here. They, mm -hmm. they communicate with their friends and family. So why not run? You know, your business from a mobile phone. I guess you can run it. Can you start one from there? You got to set up a couple of things. I can set up autoresponders, set up, a, set up your capture pages, all those things. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, of course, you need a laptop. Like I say, you always need, no matter what, every person that's working online, you first need a laptop. And then the cell phone complements, you know, the laptop. It complements, so you yeah. Laptop, you can answer messages, you can engage Message. with people. Engage. Yeah, so... Yeah, you know, you know, Facebook, Instagram, you go on and like people's photos, comment, you know, message people. So, you know, it's definitely, you can definitely sustain a business, you know, through a cell phone. But Absolutely. actually build one, I say, you got to have a laptop, man. You, you got to have a laptop. You got to have a, you got to find that $200, go to Best Buy, and get a laptop. If you they don't got sales on there, man. They got a lot of sales. Hey, that's how I bought my first laptop. It was Best Buy. I looked in the little papers, and I found the one that was on sale, and I went in there and, and bought it. Right, you know, right. What's your number one tool right now in your business? Number one tool. Mindset, man. My mind. <laughs> <laughs> your mind. I'm, I'm that serious, man. I mean, that's, that's not, it's true. My mind. My mind's number one so thing. All this thing, this old thing called internet can wipe out. If you have your mind, you're good. Dude, like, put, put me anywhere on this God, God green earth, man. Just give me a laptop and a cell phone. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like that. No. I always tell people, always like, tell listen, people like, listen, I want to, um, I want to, um, oh, I'm getting feedback. Oh, I'm getting feedback. Let's make sure. Make sure. All right. So I, I always tell people, like, listen, if you, if you, if you take cell phone away from me, just make sure you take it away from everybody else in the world, too. But I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if somebody has it, I want it, too. If somebody has this on it, I want it too. I want the tool. If somebody has the tool, I want the tool because uh, speed is everything in this business. Uh, what's your take on that? Do you care for speed or uh, time? Uh, you know, is that, is, that, is that a big deal for you in your business? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, it's a huge thing. You know, yeah. it's the speed, speed, of, speed of implementation, right? Yeah. Uh, the speed of how you deliver things, you know, right? So this, speed is definitely crucial, you yeah. know, and business you know getting things done that's why we, we're so adamant in, in hiring people hiring more people because we know the more people that we can bring on right. right the faster things get done the faster i can outsource things like hey you do this you do that blah 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 and we we move faster so speed is, is an important thing in business especially in oh, today's wow. market now you guys you guys encounter any kind of challenge with hiring hiring virtual assistants or even physical assistants um any, any uh, we usually hire people that, that we know. Okay. Right. We start people we know. Um, we do that because, you know, the, the trust factor. 
It depends on what we're doing, though. It, it, could, it, it could be like if it's a graphic, you know, we can outsource that to somebody that we don't particularly know that well. You know, we're testing them out. But the people that we usually hire, and the reason why I say this, you know, people might think I'm crazy, man, but, uh, you know, there's so many sources out there like Fiverr, like Odesk, like so many different companies out there that do outsourcing. Right. But us, and it's cheap, don't get me wrong, you can run a really cheap business by outsourcing to India and China and all that. Yeah. But to me personally, what I've seen is the quality, right? The quality has not been there. And it's really hard to find. Right. Somebody. And I don't want to put my living beliefs on anybody out there. Right. 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 So, you know, I'm just saying my experience, I rather work with people that I know, people that, you know, are. But it's you know, true. Because, um, it's true because Ray Higdon said uh, it's usually the most expensive way to run your business if you hire wrongfully. If you're not careful when you're hiring people. You could end up uh, spending, it's probably going to be the most expensive thing for you to do in your business if you're not careful. Yeah, I did that. I, I was trying to hire somebody to do um, messaging for me, and it's costing more money than it, than it, than it made me because I, I was looking in, in cheap places, right? So, what I'm looking for are people, what, people are quality, right? People back to what I was saying, people that are passionate about what they do, particularly. Like everybody that works in our company, right. they're passionate about what they, what they do, they love it. All right, all right. So tell us what's hot. What's hot on your plate right now? What are you guys promoting right now? That's hot that you want people to go check out. Oh, our system, man. Our limitless one system. You now we finally came out with a, a, a low ticket item. You know where the masses can come in and start learning from us because okay. everything up to this point has been you know higher price items, right? It's been more exclusive, right? You know, to, to get our education. But now we're opening the doors to where we can have people from all walks of life. You know, no matter what budget you know you have, you know, even if you're from the curious to, you know, to the person that you know, is ready to go, you know, we have, you know, a product for everybody now. So we're promoting our Limitless One system, you know, heavily now. Absolutely. Totally, totally dig that, man. I uh, just wanted to appreciate you, man, for coming on, man. I had a lot it's of fun. It was, it was a blast. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm sure everybody will appreciate it. Uh, hey, hopefully, hopefully you've been enlightened, educated. I'll see you on the next one. And peace. <laughs> Hey, do you want my steps to six figure PDF? Do you want that? Do you want my free ebook on how to make six figures income in simple steps? Simply go to network marketing to show.com. Network marketing to show.com.